the next thing that this game needs is some enemies. To do that, we're going to create another scene and we'll add a node to it, which will be another character body 2D node. And I'm going to rename this to match the type of enemy, which is going to be a goblin. And just like with the player, this gives us a yellow warning here because we need to add a couple of things to it. The first is going to be our animated sprite because this character is going to have an animation. And the second is going to be a collision shape. Let's start off with the animation. So just like before, we go into the animation tab over here and create a new sprite frame. Click on that again and we'll start setting up our animations. The first one I'll create is idle. And if I go into my enemies, I've got the goblin here with different animation images. There are four of them in the idle animation, which I'll drag over here. And since this is the default animation, I want this one to autoplay. We can take a look at it in the 2D view and just see what it looks like. Now that is far too small, so we're going to scale it, but I'll actually scale the entire node. If I go into my goblin node up here and go into transform, I can change the scale from one to four. And now we can see the image a little bit better. So we'll go into the animation and click play just to see it progressing. Now this animation does look kind of slow compared to the character. So I'm going to increase the speed by setting this to 10 frames per second instead of five. And now it's going to play at double the speed it did before. So that takes care of idle. Now let's set up another animation, which is going to be run. And I just drag over these four frames over here. Set the frame rate again to 10 frames per second. Let's just check that one out. So that looks good. And the last animation, it's not actually an animation. It's only one still image, but it doesn't matter. It's still going to work the same. So I drag over the dead frame into this dead animation. The frame rate here doesn't matter. So I've just left it at five frames per second because there's nothing here to actually flick through. Now that we've done that, we need to set up the collision shape. So let's switch back over to, let's say the idle animation, go into our collision shape and create a new rectangular shape. And then just adjust the size of it like we did previously for the player, just to match the outside of this goblin character. Like so. And that takes care of most of the setup. But one thing we need to do is set up the physics or rather the collision. We'll go back into our goblin node, this parent node here, click on collision and then change the layer from one, which is bushes onto three, which is the enemies. So this goblin is always going to be on layer three because it is one of the enemies and the collision will only be detected with the bushes. You might be wondering why not the player and we will handle that slightly differently. With that done, we can now save the scene inside of our scenes folder. Now we need a way of getting these goblins into the game so that when we actually run our game, these enemies spawn somewhere and I want them to spawn off the screen. So they spawn somewhere over here outside of these gaps and then move into the game area. To do that, we're going to create another scene and this scene is going to handle our enemy spawning. We'll set up a node here, which will be just a node 2D and we'll rename that to enemy spawner. The spawner will then have multiple points at which it can randomly spawn an enemy. To add these points, we create child nodes and these nodes are going to be marker 2D. Those little entrances on our map, they're somewhere in the middle at the top here. So I actually need to move this marker over here. So I go into transform and I'll set the position to 360 and minus 50. Then I can create another one next to it. So this will be another marker 2D and I just shift it slightly along. The coordinates here will be 405 and again, minus 50 on the Y coordinate. And then I'll create the last one for that top window or that top area. And this one is going to be at 450 and minus 50. And we can test this out just to see how it looks and how it lines up with everything else. So if I save this scene, I can then go back into my main scene and instantiate that enemy spawner here. And once I've done that, you can see these markers appearing and they're lining up nicely with these three open spaces or the three tiles that I've left empty for the enemies to come in from. Now it's just a case of going back here and creating the remaining nine markers. So there's going to be three on the left, three on the right, and three on the bottom. So that you don't have to watch me create all of these one by one, 
I'll put all the coordinates up on the screen so that you can set up the markers yourself and then I'll skip ahead to when they're all already completed. And now I've got all 12 markers positioned, so you should have the same thing set up here. Three up here, three at the bottom, three on the left and three on the right. Now these three down the bottom, they actually look like they're inside of our game window, but that's okay because this is the bottom section where we're going to have our heads up display. So the enemies should still spawn down here and then come into the game area. This spawner is going to be based on a timer. So we actually need one more node to complete this scene. And that's going to be a timer node. We'll leave it as one second to begin with, but the only property I want to change is this auto start. We'll tick that to be on so that as soon as the game begins, the timer starts with it. Now we can begin creating this script to actually generate these enemies. We'll go into our parent node at the top and add a script onto it. This scene is going to generate the goblin scene, so it needs to know where that goblin scene actually is. We're going to save it inside a variable called goblin scene, and then we will preload our goblin scene location. So if we go into where these assets and files are, we've got our scenes folder and it's got goblin inside there. So we can just scroll through looking for the right one. I'll go into enemies, no rather I'll go into scenes and then goblin. And the second thing I need is all of these markers grouped together. So I could manually add them into a Godot group, but instead I'm just going to create an array and put all of those markers into it. So that's what we will do first. As soon as this enemy spawner node enters our scene tree for the first time, it runs this ready function. So this is where we're going to update this spawn points array. The first thing we want to do is iterate through all of the children inside of this node. So that's going to iterate through all of the markers, but also the timer. I don't want the timer to be counted here, I just want the markers. That means that I need to check what this variable i actually is. And if it is a marker 2D node, which all of these ones are, but the timer isn't, then I take my spawn points array and I append that variable into it. By the end of this for loop, I'm going to have a fully populated spawn points array which contains each one of these markers. Now we can handle the enemy spawning. We don't actually need a process function, so we can delete that because this node works based on the timer. What we will do instead is take our timer, go into the node section up here, and we'll select this timeout signal. Basically what this means, as it says in the tooltip there, that this is emitted when the timer reaches zero. So this is a one second timer, it's going to count down, as soon as it hits zero it will emit this signal. And we can link into this or connect it. So if I click connect, it will create a new function that is connected onto that timer. Inside this function is where I can handle my enemy generation. And the first thing I want to do is pick a random spawn point. I've got this array full of spawn points, so I just need to randomly pick one of them from that array. To do that, I will create a new variable called spawn, then I will go into my array and I will select a random variable from it. Once I have this random spawn point, I can go ahead and spawn an enemy. I'll create the enemy inside a new variable called goblin. And this goblin is going to be made from this goblin scene that we had before. So I can take that over here and say dot instantiate. This will create an instance of the goblin scene but it's going to position it at coordinate 0, 0. So I want to position it at my spawn coordinate positions. That's basically what's happening when I'm picking one of these random markers. I then assign the position of that marker onto my goblin position. Once that's done, I need to add this goblin into my main scene. Now the main scene is another level above my enemy spawner. So to access it, I'm going to need to go into my root and then back down into my main scene but that's going to get a little bit messy down here. So to keep things tidy, I'm going to define a variable right at the top, which is going to give me the path into my main node. What this line of code is saying is as soon as this node enters the scene tree and is activated, we'll create a variable called main, and it's going to be equal to our node at our root forward slash main, which is this here. Now that gives me a direct path onto my main scene. So after I've created a goblin, I can say main dot add child and put the goblin into that scene. We could try and test this at this point, 
but I think what will actually happen is that we won't be able to see the goblins even if they do spawn, because they're going to be just outside of our game window. Maybe these bottom ones here, but not the other ones. So let's save this scene, go back into the main scene, and just temporarily we'll create a camera 2D node as a child of the main node. And then if I go into here, I can just adjust this position. So if I just drag my camera over into the middle, this doesn't have to be precise at all. This is just temporary. And then change the zoom to 0.75. If I run the game again, I now see everything outside. And what you've started to notice is that these goblins have now started to pop up. So every second, another enemy is being generated and it happens at a random position. So there's actually multiple ones at certain of these marker points. Right now, the enemies are being generated, but they aren't doing anything. They just bob around in their idle state. What I want to do next is add in some AI so the enemies actually attack the player. But I'm going to do that in the next video. So for now, if you found this useful, then please leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.